Hai, Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi. Dalam video ni, saya akan explain tentang terminologi monohybrid dan juga dihybrid. The first uh, the first term is genes. Genes uh, is a basic hereditary unit that is located on a specific locus of a chromosome that determines a specific characteristic in the organism. So uh, basically, kalau secara mudahnya, kita nak terangkan genes adalah berkaitan satu uh, ciri. Serat satu ciri yang kita akan uh, kita akan gunakan contoh ketinggian satu karakter eh satu karakter uh, contoh warna mata tapi bagi warna mata uh, ciri-cirinya yang lebih spesifik ada banyak warna mata ada warna coklat ada warna hitam ada warna biru ada war mata warna kelabu uh, jadi yang itu itu adalah ciri-ciri bagi sesuatu jin. Kalau kita tengok pada gambar raja, okay, kromosom homolog, homologus kromosom, uh, a pair, is a pair. So for each jin, it will be located on a specific kromosom. And if uh, for that particular pair of homologus kromosom, the jin will be located on the same locus. For example, here is the gene that determine the height of a garden pea. So for height, we have a characteristic tall and dwarf for garden pea. So it's either character tall or character dwarf for that particular gene. The gene located at this locus. The locus might be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8. So, this height of garden pea gene is located at locus 8, for example. Well, alleles is an alternative form of a gene, meaning that um, besides um, to make up a gene, the, we have to have an allele. Allele is a member of a pair. Gene comes with pair because our chromosome comes as a pair. So that uh, particular gene um, consists of alleles and alleles will be located at that specific position, locus on the chromosome. For example, gene that determine the height of a garden pea represented by letter T or T capital or T small t because alphabets are used to represent that allele. So allele is a representation of a gene. So allele can be single letter, either capital or a small letter. When the alleles pair together, it will make up a gene. See, this diagram shows this is our original chromosome before uh, before the synthesis phase. Okay, synthesis phase of the interface. After replication, which is during the S phase of interface, the chromosome will be replicated and thus it will have sister chromatids attached to the centromere. This is its pair. Since we have allele, we have the capital allele, uh, capital letter for dominant allele. Dominant allele is an allele that is fully expressed in the phenotype of a heterozygote. Hetero means not similar, different. So for every uh, gene. Um, the content of the gene, if it is represented by allele with different, um, different capital and small letter, it will be called heterozygous. Zygote is the individual that carry the heterozygous genotype. So for dominant allele, fully expressed 
meaning it will win. It will mask the effect of other allele that paired with it. Designated by capital letters. And usually, whenever heterozygous genotype are mentioned or written, the capital T, the dominant allele, uh, capital letter, the dominant allele will uh, be written first. For example, the gene that determines the pot shape. Pot shape is the gene. Uh, the allele that make up the gene is uh, allele P, eh? P, capital P. That give um, characteristics of inflated pot. While recessive allele and allele are uh, whose phenotype will not be observed in heterozygote. So it will not, uh, the, the effect will be masked. Dominant allele will show its effect rather than the recessive allele and designated by lower case. For example, constricted. Ha, tadi, uh, yang tadi tu dia inflated. So, dia licin saja smooth. Yang ni, restricted. Kita akan nampak dia berkedut-kedut. So, this is a recessive allele. Locus is a specific location on a gene. Okay. On, on each locus, there will be a gene. So, this, uh, this is one 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 gene, second gene, gene number two and gene number three, located at three different locus and represented by three different letters. So this, uh, for this particular gene, particular uh, tray, uh, character, uh, it, uh, it is homozygous, homozygous. And this is also homo zygous and this is what we call as heterozygous genotype is a genetic constituents of an individual the gene the <coughs> sorry the p uh, the capital p capital p uh, homozygous dominant. This is a genotype. We know that it should be represented by capital letter. While heterozygous, a genotype, the genotype would be capital letter and small letter. So this is the genotype that is represented by the alphabet. The genotype control, uh, for example, the genotype that control the constricted pot shape. Uh, homozygous recessive. The phenotype is a physical characteristics determined by the genotype. So we should know um, phenotype is the observable characteristics. Uh, the one that we can we can observe, we can see either uh, become a disease, things that we know while we are living. While genotypes is the um, information that can only be found on the DNA. That is the difference between phenotype and genotypes. Homozygous when uh, we have two identical alleles for a given gene. Homozygous dominant because capital B. Homozygous recessive because small letter, small b. Heterozygous when it has two different alleles for a given gene, not not different num uh, letter only, also for capital and small. Whenever because B represent different uh, traits, uh, small B different traits. For example, uh, for uh, tall and this is dwarf. So tall and dwarf is two different traits. For that particular genes. Jadi maksudnya kat sini. Inilah heterozygous. Okay. For genetic diagram. We still use the keyword. P for parental. G for gamete. F1 generation means. First filial generation. 
offspring of the parental cross. For example, when our parents, um, mom and dad, married, we are their first filial generation. And when we get married, we will, be, we will have children and our children will become the second filial generation. Barnett Square is a diagram used in the study of inheritance to show predicted results and usually Barnett Square is used when two different individuals were crossed and have many different uh, gamete. Uh, if only one one gamete, one type of gamete, it is not. Uh, we will not use the Barnett Square. Another term that you need to familiar be familiar with is self cross. Self cross is a cross between organisms of the same generation, meaning amongst F1, filial first filial. Uh, so in human, it does not happen. Okay, does not happen. Uh, we we do not uh, uh mate with our siblings, for example, uh, uh, but for plants and um, for plants and animals, uh, it can be it can be found self cross to happen. Or in F in between F one generation, meaning um because in plants when we cross plants, they do not produce only one plant. There are so many plants. So the plants um the crossing either between the plants of the same generation, uh, the F1, or within the same plant. It's also termed as self-cross. While test cross, whenever we want to determine, we want to determine the uh, genotype of an unknown, uh, unknown genotype, an unknown genotype of a specific specific trait because observe uh, from our observation we can determine we can determine the phenotypes but we do not know the genetic and the genotype of that particular uh, character so we, we have to do test cross but the test cross must be done between an organism of recessive phenotype because we know recessive phenotype must be must have a homozygous recessive, eh? recessive trait. Uh, let me use another letter. Uh, homozygous recessive trait. We know recessive phenotypes uh, have recessive, homozygous recessive trait, like homozygous recessive genotype. While another organism of dominant phenotype, but unknown genotype, uh, dominant, it has a dominant phenotype, for example, uh, a tall plant, but the genotype it might might be homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. So we want to determine this one or this one. That why that why, that was uh, that's uh, when we should use the test cross. So for example, if okay, whenever uh, there are two hypotheses, if the plant is homozygous dominant. When we cross it with the homozygous recessive, all of the progenies will produce um, will produce a dominant phenotype. Okay, it will be heterozygous every every individual. But if the individual is a heterozygous and then we cross with a homozygous recessive, we might see. Uh, an occurrence of the recessive phenotypes. Okay. Eh? Itu adalah test cross untuk menguji. So we are going to learn it, uh, the genetic diagram later on in details. Back cross is a cross between organisms of the first generation, the F1, with individuals of the parental generation. Uh, we cross, we back cross the offspring with the parent. This is an extra. Uh, you can read it from the notes, but I'm not going to explain. I'm going to continue with the, um, the next lesson. Okay, the seven characteristics of Mendel's pea plant. 
Mendel's pea plant, uh, garden pea or pisum sativum. This is a pea plant that we used to uh, eat. Eh? Why Mendel used pea plant? This is the reason. Why Mendel used pea plant? Because uh, pea plant are available in many varieties. Available in many varieties. Easy to grow. It has short life cycle. Then pollination. Pollination adalah pendebungaan. Eh? Pendebungaan. Can be controlled. Then characteristics are easy to observe. Can be cross-pollinated or fertilized. And also they can self-pollinate it. Left to pollinate by themselves. Monohybrid cross is a genetic cross between parents of one characteristic with a different trait that derive from one particular gene. So monohybrid cross, the keyword is one particular gene. It involves only one gene. Sebab tu nama dia monohybrid. And the parental organism starts with a pure breed. Pure breed means they have homozygous genotype. Either homozygous, either homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. That is the meaning of pure breed. See, let's look at this. Purple flowers, homozygous dominant. White flowers, homozygous recessive. So, uh, my Mendel starts with these uh, characters and then it produces all. The observation shows that all flowers are purple. And then in second generation, uh, the F1 generation are left to fertilize. They fertilize, um, then they produce F2 generation. In the F2 generation, Mendel observed there is an occurrence of white flowers. Okay, white flowers. Well, what does this mean? Each true breeding plant of parental generation has identical alleles. The homozygous dominant and the homozygous recessive. So gametes, each gamete contain only one allele for flower color gene. Eh? Ini kita cerita tentang gene ini sahaja. So every gamete produced by one parent has the same allele. Ni, eh? same allele. Semuanya p besar. Yang putih semuanya p kecil. Sebab dia pure breed. Dia tak ada uh, gamete yang berbeza. The union of uh, F1 gamete produces F1 hybrids that have heterozygous genotype, which shows purple colors. All flowers are purple. And when F1 hybrid produce gamete, they have two alleles. Okay, they have two alleles, two different alleles. The gamete have two different kinds of gamete. First, the gamete that carry uh, dominant P. Then they have the gamete for small P. Recessive P. Eh? In cross between F1 generation in the self cross, we see that that is what we call a self cross because we uh, Mendel led the F1 generation to self cross so in uh, in a bit during the self cross of the first filial the first filial will have two different two different gametes so we use the punnett square to show the combination of these different gametes so for uh, in the in, in the observation in among f2 generation mendel observe uh, a 3 to 1 ratio of phenotypes. Hasil dia, in every 3 purple flower, there will be 1 white flower. So this is the step in drawing genetic diagram. Start with P, T, P besaya for parental. The gamut must be circle and then 
we have, must have the arrow to show the combination of the garment. So must write here F1 genotype. F1 phenotype, the characteristic that shown. And then the genotypic ratio, all PP. And phenotypic ratio, all progenies with purple flower. The F1 generations are self-cross. Then we have the F1, it's cross with F1. So kat sini kita tak tulis P eh, kita tak tulis P sebab ini sambungan kepada uh, cross tadi. So, heterozygous dengan heterozygous. So, you see, two different gamete. So, it produce phenotype ratio of 3 to 1. The inference that Mendel made from this experiment, each characteristic is determined by factors that exist in pair. Sebab kita dapat uh, satu gene, dua alil. One factor is inherited from male parent and another from female parent. Uh, that is yang kita belajar dalam cell division pun sama. Kromosom, satu daripada parent, um, mother, satu daripada father. The pair is separated during the formation of gamete, which is the meiosis. Okay. Only one factor is transferred in each gamete. One factor is the allele, lah. B besar or B kecil. If the two alleles at a locus are different, the dominant allele will determine the phenotypes of the organism. Maksud kat sini, dua alil at a locus. Maksudnya, at a, at a same locus. Contoh, kita ada kromosom. Locus yang sama. Ini adalah homologous kromosom. So, at the same locus, if the alil is different, meaning different kat sini, satu capital letter, satu small letter. Jadi, satu, homo, satu dominant, satu recessive. Okay, alright. If the two alleles are different, then the dominant allele will determine the phenotype. It will mask the P will, the capital P, the dominant allele will mask the effect of the recessive allele. The pair of allele from a characteristic then will be segregated during meiosis. Only one allele is transferred to each gamete. Jadi masa anaphase akan terpisah ke sana. Kutub bertentangan. Now, let's learn about Mendel's first law, the law of segregation. The law of segregation states that the two alleles for a heritable character will segregate from each other during gamete formation into different gamete. Segregate means Segregate maksudnya dia akan uh, terpisah, uh, akan ter, uh, terbahagi, eh? terbahagi. Jadi apa yang uh, law of segregation kata ni, kita ada satu jin ada dua alil dan setiap satu alil tu akan terpisah masuk meiosis. Uh, jadi satu akan masuk gamet, satu gamet, satu lagi akan masuk another gamet. Itu, itu Mendel's first law. Eh? Let's look at relationship between Mendel's first law and meiosis. So, we have a pair of, of homologous chromosome that carry the gene for plant height. This is the gene. This is the characteristics, tall and dwarf. In the early stage of meiosis 1, the pair of homologous chromosome will duplicate forming sister chromatid. Okay. Not the early stage of meiosis one, the early uh, the interface eh? during interface. So during metaphase one, the homologous chromosomes arrange at metaphase plate. 
arrange at metaphase plate and then they will be separated during anaphase 1. The pair is separated and moved towards opposite poles. So these two alleles are different and dominant and recessive because they, they come from a pure breed. Right? So the allele segregated from each other, separated. In anaphase 2, while in anaphase 2, please remember the earlier form of the chromosome before. So the H capital, recessive and dominant. Okay. The recessive. So the sister chromatid separated, then moved to opposite poles. So the opposite poles are causing the um, pair of allele separated into different cell. In at the end of telophase two, four gametes are produced, which every gamete will will carry only one chromosome that bears one allele for plant height. It's either the dominant or the recessive allele. Dihybrid cross. Dihybrid cross from the word die here, from the terms die means it, it is uh, related to a cross between parents of two characteristics. For monohybrid, it's one, but for dihybrid, it's about two characteristics with different traits derived from two different genes. So dihybrid is about two genes. We are talking about two genes at the same time. Because one, uh, one organism does not only have one character, one gene, kan? Kita ada banyak gene dalam badan kita. Jadi, it's not it's, it does not stop at dihybrid cross, but bila kita explain ni, kita akan cerita monohybrid dihybrid je. For example, a pea, a pea plant with two characteristics, seed color and the shape color. So when we have to draw, draw a diagram, a genetic diagram, the genotype must be written like this. Uh, one gene homozygous dominant for one gene and the second gene so the latter must be written accordingly kita tak buat ry ry tak boleh macam tu eh? jadi kita mesti uh, r dengan r y dengan y so do not confuse when we draw the gamete the gamete must have both allele both allele for both genes eh bukan both allele from one gene jadi mesti satu 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 huruf satu satu huruf lagi masuk jadi sebab akan ada yang keliru nanti dia akan buat sampai empat gamet kan uh, salah lah kalau macam ni uh, kalau awak buat macam ni this is mono hybrid sebab ada satu huruf saja jadi ni di hybrid dia mesti ada dua huruf lah dalam gamet dia So, uh, the first generation and then the first generation is led to first self-fertilize and then produce a different, uh, different character. Do not, uh, it will be explained later. A true breeding plant that grown from a round yellow seed. Okay, this is a true breed or pure breed. Sama eh, true breed dengan pure breed. It's the same thing. Round yellow seed. Homozygous dominant for both traits. Dengar eh, ni homozygous dominant ni. R, homozyg uh, R dominant, Y pun dominant. Cross with a true breeding plant grown from a wrinkled green seed. Jadi bila kita tahu, kalau kalau lah uh, ini tidak dinyatakan homozygous uh, dia punya genotype ni. Bila kita baca, say uh, the sentence um, saying a true breeding plant grown from a round yellow seed. 
Jadi kita dah tahu round yellow seed True breed Jadi dia mesti homozygous lah ha. Kalau lepas tu True breeding plant Grown from a wrinkled green seed Jadi kalau kita tahu wrinkled green seed ni Dia adalah recessive Kalau tak tulis true breeding pun Kita akan tahu dia adalah R, R kecil, Y, Y kecil eh? Yang homozygous recessive Okay, it, it is the same thing but do not confuse with the two letters. Tadi satu let, satu jenis huruf saja, yang ini dua jen, dua huruf, uh, sama ada huruf besar huruf kecil. In dihybrid crossing of uh, between F1 generation, self cross between F1 among F1 generation, the offspring of F2 generation produce shows different dif, uh, shows different uh, ratio and there are more than two character that can be found um, there is also a combination okay, let's see round yellow is a parent the pure breed parent from before uh, that produced the F1 generation just now well, wrinkle green is the pure breed of the homozygous recessive. Okay. And this one is the combination between the parents. The round, but then combined with the green. And the wrinkle from here, and combined with the yellow. So, this is a recombination, recombinant character. Because it is a combination of this parent and this parent. So we have a nine. The most the most number is the dominant character. And the least uh, last least number is the recessive character. While the the three and the three is the Recombination character. Okay. So this is when uh, Punnett square is very useful because both uh, both uh, parents uh, produces four different uh, gamete. Okay? Four different gamete. So it it will be a hassle, a mess, a mess if we try to. Uh, use the four, this four uh, gamete, and then we want to cross this one. This one, it would be, uh, it would be a confusing. It would be confusing. So it is better that we use the Punnett square. Okay, dihybrid is very related to the law of independent assortment. Okay, Mendel's second law. Each pair of allele segregate independently of other pairs of allele during gamete formation. So this independently is referring to how they were, how they were, how they um, arrange or aligned at the metaphase plane. Um, do they, uh, which one is facing the poles? Okay, which one is facing the pole? The combination either okay a blue and blue red and red but it can be blue red red blue so it it happens independently okay it happens independently secara rawa random assorted independently itu yang dikatakan assorted eh dia tersusun sama ada biru-biru merah-merah atau biru merah merah biru Genes are packaged into gametes in all possible allelic combination. Ah, the combination would be any any combination, anything possible. Selagi ada kebarangkalian itu, it will be possible. If independent assortment occur, the F1 generation will transmit alleles in the same combination in which
which the allele were inherited from the parental generation. So the, the F1 generation produce two kinds of comet. Dia punya possibility tu akan ada kalau contoh eh, kalau uh, oh sorry, if dependent assortment occur. Kalau dependent, maknanya kena tetapkan. Kutub ini contoh eh, mesti allele R sahaja. Okay, R besar sahaja. Mesti huruf besar sahaja. So, Y besar. Yang ini baru boleh, yang sebelah kanan um, boleh allele recessive. Saja. So, tak ada siapa tentukan. Um, kutub kiri mesti allele dominant. Kutub kanan mesti Untuk kanan mesti early recessive tak ada. So because there is no deter, uh, something that determine that uh, arrangement, assortment, that was why uh, the gene are assorted, the allele are assorted independently. So the relationship between Mendel's second law and meiosis. Consider that two pairs of homologous chromosome carry the gene for seed color and seed shape. Eh? Ini dua karakteristik. So the allele for yellow seed is dominant to the green seed. Round seed is dominant to the wrinkle seed. So yang ini dikatakan ini, nah ni masih nak prophase satu kan? Kita tengok gambar ni, ni prophase 1. So Y should pair with Y, R should pair with R. The homologous, so during prophase 1, the homologous chromosome will pair up in metaphase 1. All the pet homologous chromosome are sorted independently. So at this point is where the assortment begins. The independent assortment begins. So should uh, the, the the chromosome asking, okay, should we face the left pole or right pole? So we will say uh, it's up to you. Komu, eh, komu. Jadi DVD akan sorted independently. It's either either uh, the the dominant R pair with the recessive Y, or it could be the dominant R pair with the dominant Y. Uh, sebab tu dalam heterozygous, bila kita nak come up dengan uh, gamet, kita come uh, kita akan come up dengan okay R kemungkinan dengan Y, R besar kemungkinan dengan Y kecil ada. Kemudian ada kemungkinan R kecil dengan Y besar. Kemudian R kecil mungkin juga dengan R dengan Y kecil. Jadi ini semua adalah possible gamut combination. Itu yang maksud dia. Eh? So in anaphase 1, the homologous chromosome separated to opposite poles yang menyebabkan dah berlaku dah kombinasi yang berbeza ni. Ini adalah hetero. Ini adalah Ah, sorry, ini adalah kombinasi dominan dan uh, resesif. Ini pun sama. Ini resesif-resesif. Yang ini dominan-dominan. Jadi, at the end of telophase 1, four possible classes of gamut are produced. In dihybrid test, uh, dihybrid test cross, kita dah tahu jiri dia tapi kita tak tahu genotype dia. Jadi kita buat test cross, kita kacukkan dia dengan homozygous recessive ataupun recessive phenotypes. Kita cari recessive phenotype. Okay. Um, when, uh, so, uh, the expected the expected um, ratio for dihybrid cross is 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. Ini yang kita kena ingat lah. Ini adalah kombinasi. Jadi biasanya kalau dia melibatkan heterozygous for both trait, kombinasi ratio nya adalah ini. Semuanya dalam jumlah yang sama. Ciri-ciri, empat ciri phenotype. Okay, ini adalah... Tall purple adalah uh, parentals, eh? parentals yang pure breed tadi. Dwarf and white, parental yang pure breed, homozygous recessive. Uh, 
So this is the combination of these two parentals. So as a summary, if heterozygous in monohybrid crossing, if heterozygous and heterozygous are crossed together or F1 self cross, F1 ni kita refer kepada hasil daripada pure breed kacuk dengan pure breed anak dia jadi heterozygous. Okey, eh ini. Jadi kita akan dapat phenotype ratio 3 to 1. For test cross uh, in monohybrid, test cross heterozygous or unknown heterozygous kalau dia heterozygous uh, unknown phenotype unknown genotype. Tapi kalau dia heterozygous, kacuk dengan homozygous recessive, kita sepatutnya dapat satu nisbah satu. Untuk the hybrid cross, ratio yang kita kena ingat 9331 kalau heterozygous dengan heterozygous for both trait. Manakala satu nisbah satu nisbah satu apabila heterozygous dengan homozygous recessive. Okay, thank you.